Shandor Lederer um, from K-Monitor, which is an anti-corruption watchdog institute in Hungary. Um, it was founded in 2007 as a grassroots NGO, and we have three main pillars of operation. Um, it's about anti-corruption advocacy. We do um, researches. We are actually the local research country correspondents for the EU's uh, anti-corruption research. And um, we, we have several open data projects. Um, and what I would like to talk about are the challenges that democracy and civic participation in Hungary is facing uh, these days. But let me go back uh, some years to the times when we started K-Monitor. And at that time, corruption was, uh, politics were not less corrupt than it is now actually. And the civic activism was also way behind the level uh, where it should be for a country with so many problems. Um, but actually these were the reasons why we thought there is a need for such an NGO. And it turned out that at that time a lot of other groups thought very similarly. Um, seven, year, uh, seven, eight years ago, Hungarian civil society was in a phase of slow flourishing. Um, Transparent, Transparency International's Hungarian chapter was founded at this, that time. Um, the Hungarian Civil Liberties Union's uh, Freedom of Information program won cases after cases in Freedom of Information law suites. And smaller groups aroused from the nothing that were targeting um, individual cases of corruption uh, and mismanagement of public funds. And a lot of these initiatives succeeded in their efforts. And more and more people felt that civil society can have an impact on the life of communities in Hungary. And, uh, and also on the most serious, and also on the way the country is uh, run. And our problems were huge, of course, as I mentioned, but what is important that we were in an, in, uh, acting in an environment um, where we felt that the space for civic action is expanding. But as I said, um, the previous government term and, and these times were so corrupt and, and, and the previous government was so incapable to give um, real answers on the most serious problems of the country that it was, it was washed away as never seen before uh, by its opposition that gained a supermajority in the parliament at the national elections in 2010. A system named the System of National Cooperation was established, which is, I think, quite scary uh, in, in, in after 2000. Um, ever since then, Hungary has gone through enormous changes that completely reshaped the environment for political and civic action in the last four years. Um, today, actually, um, we're not working to expand our rights, but rather to defend them. And on this picture, you can see our prime minister. <laughs> um, I, the challenges I, I, I would like to talk about in detail are these four. So um, let's go into them. The first and maybe uh, one of the, the most, and actually um, just, just a brief uh, note to, to, uh, to this new government. This two-third majority or supermajority enabled the government to compromise the ch system of checks and balances and reshape institutions completely um, and fill them up with, uh, and fill them up, and also uh, independent agencies with officials who are absolutely loyal uh, to the governing parties. And the form of democracy has been established in which the ruling parties try to capture the state for both ideological purposes and also economical gain. So, taking uh, one of the uh, most serious problems, um, it's about independent institutions and the legal fr frameworks, something we're absolutely used to have in the last 25 years. And I could mention many examples here, starting with the abolition of the action popularis at the Constitutional Court, or the appointment of politically loyal players to, to all independent institutions, as I said before, um, but also to the changes made to the election system. With this election system we have now, the, the, the government uh, in power would have won even the elections in 2006. But however, uh, one of the most crucial changes from transparency NGOs were the step backs regarding the right to information. Um, after uh, turning the independent office of the Freedom of Information Commission to the state authority, again, something against its uh, independence, 
um, and also taking its special right to review confidential documents, the government um, continued to water down freedom of information legislative in a very harsh way. Last year, uh, right at the time when a coalition of NGOs and news portal requested data on the shady tenders uh, of, on tobacco licenses, the government's politicians initiated an amendment to the Freedom of Information Act, which would enable data owners to deny uh, excessive data requests. There were no actually um, definition what excessive can mean. It was up to the data owners to decide whether they consider data requests as this. And uh, this amendment, of course, applied on all ongoing cases, so even on this uh, uh, which we started to approach. And it was accepted immediately by the parliament. Um, and what is even more ridiculous, uh, this amendment of the act happened just a week after Hungary presented its action plan to the OGP in London. So I think this is a challenge also for OGP, but I stay at Hungary now. Um, so this law can uh, uh, cause serious setbacks in other cases, as it gives authorities the right to hold back important data sets uh, on public funds. A lot of these data sets was, uh, have been interlinked and used by, by other NGOs and of course also K-Monitor. Um, but what is even more dangerous, this law reverses positive tendencies regarding citizens and journalists increasing appetite for information on public spending. As I said, um, there has been a trend in the last five, four years that requesting data became a basic tool for journalists and NGOs, and, uh, and authorities started to realize that withholding this information cannot be justified anymore. Um, also, judges got familiar with freedom of information cases, and only really the nastiest officers um, tried blocking data requests, hoping that citizens don't have the energy and, uh, and the time for endless lawsuits. But with the, with the help of some NGOs, even they got legal support and could go to court and fight for their rights. Uh, an investigative portal called Atlat, so even adopted Alavetelli and helped hundreds of citizens to get uh, to request data. But now this Freedom of Information Act is a real threat for these groups and is a major setback on a very, very positive change in people's attitude, uh, attitude towards public information. Um, and then let me move to, to another very um, big issue, which um, we have never considered as, 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 a, as a problem or, or, or as a threat. There is no um, real political opposition and political competition in the country. Um, political competition, as you know, helps lots of civil advocates uh, to find more channels uh, to influence lawmaking or just to create pressure on the government in relevant issues. In some countries, political parties even take over uh, civil ideas. This government, although, avoids real consultation, or if there are consultations, um, they're rather hearing session, just with the aim to communicate the government's openness. So as said, there is no real political opposition, nor, uh, neither in nor outside of the parliament. Um, the ones who are sitting in the parliament are rather scenery. Um, when changing the constitution or adopting um, all the cardinal laws and scandalous amendments of laws, the Freedom of Information Act is one of them, um, the, those who were um, uh, acting against it and who were pointing out all the risks and deficiencies of these laws were NGOs. And they were also those who organized demonstrations and alarmed international institutions. Well, we know this role of the civil society in Russia or Belarus, but it was not typical in the sea region before, or at least not in Hungary. We thought we're living in times of uh, consolidation, and also our donors uh, thought so when moving on saying uh, their work is done in, in Central Eastern Europe. But this opposition role actually has also uh, brought another challenge for NGOs in defending themselves against government propaganda that tries to mix them together actually with political oppositions uh, in the eye of the public, demonstrating that NGOs that criticize the government are actually foreign agents and enemies of the state. Unfortunately, this way of communication has its effect. When organizing campaigns now, citizens on, or companies often refuse to cooperate, just as saying they want, don't want to be involved in politics. 
And let me just switch for a moment to another country of the region, just to so show the contracts. The situation regarding corruption and uh, uh, political culture is not very different in the Czech Republic. The president, who was elected directly for the first time, does everything to broaden its power against the parliament uh, and the government. And the previous prime minister actually lost its office due to a corruption scandal. And in the new elections, or in the early elections, an extremely populist party scored second and became part of the government. But this, despite all these troubles, basic democratic institutions seem to function. And, um, and, and, uh, and, 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 and an incredibly successful civil in initiative was launched called the Reconstruction of the State. Um, this project is about accepting nine legislative measures that help, to fight, uh, that help um, the government to fight corruption and foster the integrity of the state. The coalition of a dozen of civil actors uh, managed to make hundreds of politicians to sign this pledge. Um, and already they succeeded in one of their motions and abolished the anonymous shares of companies. Now, if I would be a representative of the Hungarian government here, I had to say, uh, well, actually, Hungary also adopted such a law. Um, according to it, only companies with a transparent and non-offshore ownership structure can receive public funds, which is okay, nice. But let me add that thanks, to, and let me add that thanks to this uh, uh, law, after years of rumors, uh, it became a fact that the biggest beneficiary in Hungary of public procurements is a company owned by the prime minister, former college mate, and also former financial director of the governing party. But was this renovation followed by any public outcry? Not really. Neither was the fact that, that the prime minister's good friend became one of the richest guys in the country in just some years. His football club is just building a huge stadium in the home, home village of the prime minister, op just opposite to his cottage house. And you would ask, do citizens know about this? Um, well, and this is the third big challenge I would like to talk about. It's, uh, it's the media in Hungary. Lots of people often have no clue about corruption cor uh, cases going on now. Since commercial stations avoid political issues, are owned by uh, companies close to the government, and the public media became totally loyal to the government. The opposition hardly appears in the news, and if it does, their appearance is usually followed by negative comments from government uh, officials. Neither NGOs have the chance to get into, um, into the public news. We haven't been invited for any news program for the last four years. Um, still, the news is full of corruption, but it's rather corruption connected to the government time before this term, which is actually funny after four years. Um, and those who get, even get uh, news from the internet, which is, of course, free, but it re reaches uh, less people than, than official news or, or the big uh, broadcast channels, um, people became really immune to these issues. And this is the fourth big challenge I would like to talk about that we're facing in Hungary, that apathy among citizens is higher than ever before, and cynicism is the most typical attitude toward civic engagement and passivity regarding any civic actions. A survey by TI Hungary, that's, that's what you can see on a slide, um, shows this excellently. Um, it, it, it shows that in Hungary, which is at the bottom, only 30% of citizens would report corruption. The main reason for this is that they don't believe that, uh, that, there would be, that it would have any sense and, or they just don't trust uh, authorities whose job would be to investigate these cases. You can see the other countries, uh, even from the region, that score much higher. Public faith in democracy has crashed along with the economy also. People started to focus much more on their own living, which is understandable since poverty and unemployment is a serious issue in Hungary, as it is in most of the countries of this region. Issues of democracy and transparency became less important if your main problem is to make ends meet. And the Hungarian government found the perfect way to buy the loyalty of citizens, even those who might be disillusioned by most government's action. They announced the reduction of overhead costs for everybody in the country. 
gas, water, electricity prices were lowered, and a new round of, redu uh, of reduction has been just announced because we're gonna have elections in three weeks. If you would have the chance to choose between corrupt politicians that only take from the public purse, or between corrupt politicians that at least give something back to you, wouldn't you, you choose the latter? Um, I could tell you such stories on, on the, until the end of this conference, um, but the last four years have brought a completely new situation and environment for civil players in Hungary. Um, and as Paul showed, this situation will remain for the next, another next uh, four years. So the, the main questions that appear now for us as civil actors is um, going really back to the basics. Because we are the ones who cannot become silent or passive at this time. Um, our job is now to examine new ways to reach out to those citizens uh, who are hiding or, 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 or uh, just keeping away uh, from the public and to find alternative channels to communicate our messages and values and to pro provide those tools and methods um, that would enable and encourage citizens to take action in matters that affect their lives. That can be, of course, a focus of, uh, on local issues maybe micro project that can spread as a positive example. But that might also mean going back to the basics of building democratic communities, um, a step that was actually skipped in our history since democracy fell into our arms 25 years ago. And technology can enormously support us, and us now in this work. Um, these are the most um, most big, big, the biggest challenges for us now. But I would also like to say, uh, finally, that this Hungarian example should also be a sign of warning for other countries in the region that our democracies are very vulnerable and fragile. Um, prime ministers such as ours uh, can, can appear in any of these countries, and believe me, um, they won't hesitate to capture the this, this state for themselves um, whenever they get a chance. So I'm looking forward to talk in this conference with you uh, in the breaks and in the other sessions about the ways we can find uh, the, and, and the methods we can find to make people stronger and, and immune to this kind of politics and uh, to build really strong democracies uh, here in Eastern Europe. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you.